Talk. Why are you talking? Because I don't want you to kill me for coming bundled with Star Fox Zero. You came with Star Fox Zero? Yes, but I'm not Star Fox Zero. But you came bundled with it. Well, yes, technically. Why should I not kill you right now? Because if you want to have any semblance of a decent game reviewer, then you should judge me by my own merit. I have a bad feeling about this. Star Fox Zero released on April 21st, 2016. And it was garbage. No, really. It was a full-blown display of Nintendo disregarding common sense and innovating for innovation's sake, and spitting in the face of fans on one of their more neglected series. My full thoughts on that game are in another video, which I'll link somewhere either on screen or in the description. But surprising most people that bought it, Star Fox Zero was not the only game that came with your purchase. With every new copy sold, you also got another disc-based game, Star Fox Guard. Now, from the layman's perspective, this may seem like a pretty good value deal. Buy a game, get one free. But if you slow down and think of it, a few logical and also potentially insidious reasons come to mind. 1. Star Fox Guard was such a weird game that it couldn't successfully be marketed on its own, and so they bundled it with Star Fox Zero to make it a better value. 2. Star Fox Zero was such absolute garbage that they bundled it with a second game to make it seem like a better value prospect, and thus maybe minus a little bit of critical savaging. Or three, and what I'm putting my money on, all of the above. But let's divorce Guard from Zero. Let's judge it as a singular title and see how it stands up. Upon first booting the game, you are greeted by Adolf Hitler, reincarnated as a toad. I knew Slippy was annoying to the point of evil, but related to reincarnated amphibious Hitler? And he's giving me a job to guard his mining facility from the advance of the Allied forces. Okay, I'm done running with that joke for now. Getting back on track, you have been offered a job to protect the mining facility belonging to Slippy's Uncle Grippy. The facility has been getting raided by villainous robots that are stealing the precious metals after taking out the facility core reactor. In order to protect the facility, you assume the role of a security guard watching cameras off-site to monitor and manage any intruders. And by manage, I mean blast with lasers. The best way I can compare it to existing games is to imagine a tower defense game mixed with Five Nights at Freddy's, but instead of just trying to keep the animatronics at bay with limited power and doors, instead attach guns to the cameras and instead of cowering in fear, you kill everything. Being a Wii U title made by Nintendo, there had to be some gimmick in using the touchscreen that needed to be shoehorned in. In this case, the game puts all the security cameras that you need to monitor on the TV screen split into 13 mini screens. 12 on the periphery and the main one you're controlling taking over the center of the screen. The touch screen shows a top-down display of the facility with the positioning of all armed cameras that also acts as a radar showing the position of intruders. Now while we're evaluating Star Fox Guard on its own merits, we do inevitably have to make comparisons with the game it came bundled with. I preface this because there is one major distinction I need to make. The touchscreen control gimmick did not work to aid the game in Star Fox Zero. It was clunky, inefficient, and actively frustrated the player. But by comparison, Star Fox Guard works. You wouldn't think that using the touchscreen to select your view and then shooting on the main TV would work when Zero established such a clear disconnect between the two control styles. But as I said, it works in this iteration, and not only does it work, it works well. By the end of the first stage, which consists of three levels that each take about five minutes, I'm already used to the controls and am effectively armed with everything I need to succeed in the game. Having been acclimated to the controls and the premise that I'm playing for it, I'm in the clear to actually try to have fun with the game. This was the main hurdle of Zero. You never truly got used to the controls enough to be able to have fun. <sighs> okay, new rule. If I mention Star Fox Zero any more in this review, then the video is done. It's just gonna end cut to black. I can't mention it anymore. I'm trying to make Star Fox Guard stand on its own merits, and every time I mention Star Fox Zero, it just gets me frustrated. Okay, Star Fox Guard, own merits. Go.
So having gotten used to the controls, the game then starts to really get underway. Your employer puts you in charge of more facilities with different building orientations, while simultaneously throwing wider varieties of robots at you that throw in all sorts of interesting challenges. Now the learning curve has all sorts of twists from robots that modify your view to others that actually remove cameras and knock them off positions. I also briefly mentioned that your map acts as a radar. There are robots that mess with that in different ways, some of them being invisible to the cameras, while others being invisible to the radar and having to be detected with the other. There's definitely no shortage of challenge with everything it throws at you, but it rarely strays into the territory of unfair. The rounds usually start with the cameras close to an optimal position, but you can reposition them to your liking if you feel you can make a more comprehensive defense. But that doesn't mean you are locked into an arrangement. As long as you have the ability to control a camera with the touchscreen, then you can change its positioning. I said it before and I'll say it again, I'm effectively armed with everything I need to succeed in the game. But while you do have everything you need, the game's biggest challenge lies in your own ability to keep cool. Once the game has introduced all the various robots, then it varies them from level to level enough to keep you on your toes, to maintain a palpable tension, and to truly never settle into comfort. Almost every time I failed a mission it was because I got too comfortable and lowered my guard, only to have a bot I wasn't expecting make an ambush, too many robots building up and attacking from different angles made it so I wasn't responding optimally and I got overrun. But after a brief bit of swearing and an annoying line from Slippy, I'd reassess what happened and rarely had to play a level more than twice, which works in its favor because if the pacing started to drag then there isn't much in the story to keep me around. Okay, here's an upcoming spoiler warning. The writing of this game isn't about to win any accolades, but I'm about to reveal the ending to everyone. So if you don't want to see it, skip to a timestamp that I'm going to put somewhere around here, alright? Spoilers in 3, 2, 1. It turns out the robots are sent by a rival mining company what I could only describe as a near-apocalyptic corporate hellscape that devolves into companies literally waging conflict with each other as a means of competition. Then again, the Star Fox team is technically a group of mercenaries, or if you want to use a less charitable term, war profiteers. Who owns the rival mining company? Pigma Dengar. Your main ally is the most annoying character in the Star Fox team, and your main antagonist is the most annoying team member of Star Wolf. It's almost as if Nintendo was trying to get me to hate this series between the character selection of Star Fox Guard and... the title that won't be named. Well, after Pigma sends wave after wave of robots at you, he ultimately tries to raid Grippy's private storage planet. Wait. I'm not letting that one slide here. Grippy looks like Toad Hitler, and he owns his own planet just for storing precious metals. I'm uncomfortable with how much power this amphibian is supposedly wielding. Okay, trying to ignore this revelation, Pigma tries a two-pronged assault by sending a literal army at your security monitoring station while he sends robots to the final facility. Is this frickin' syndicate? Pigma is literally sending an army of fighters after a lone security guard monitoring cameras so he can commit corporate theft! What? Whatever, the rest of the Star Fox team save the day by stopping the evasion and you fend off the final boss. Then Toad Hitler offers you a position of Vice President. Um, no, thanks, I have no interest in being furry Heimlich Himmler. Speaking of the bosses, their designs are interesting, but nothing really to write home about. Their main challenge comes from being a bullet sponge while you're trying to work around robots you'd be encountering anyways. I suppose it's also briefly worth pointing out the amiibo functionality. If you have a Falco or a Fox McCloud amiibo, you can scan each one once a day to basically act as a get out of jail free card. It more or less just calls an airstrike and clears out every single enemy. So it's entirely possible for you to get through half a level only to cheese the last half by letting your base get overrun and deciding that I'm bored now, let's call it an airstrike. Arguably a pay to win mechanic, but I suppose they had to shoehorn the amiibos in there somewhere as well. Now I've had a lot to say about Star Fox Guard, which I honestly didn't expect at the outset. I said of the very start that I suspected that Guard was bundled in to make the other game look better and because Guard was a bit too weird or unsubstantial to stand on its own. However, I'm not entirely certain about that anymore. While the campaign is only about three to four hours in length, the game is feature complete enough where I could theoretically see it being sold as a standalone product, so long as the price was around twenty to thirty dollars maximum. It even has some loose multiplayer aspects. It's almost sad. I feel like this game could have had a bit more positive buzz if it wasn't overshadowed by the game it was stapled to upon release. It's not amazing, but at the end of the day I have a much stronger positive impression for this appetizer than I did for the overcooked and underwhelming main course. And the last thing that really sucks is because the Wii U was such a unique system, I'm not certain we're ever going to be able to get something exactly like this again. 
While other titles that debuted on the Wii U may potentially be able to see various ports, others are probably unfortunately going to be left behind. Other titles had things like touchscreen functionality or poorly implemented motion controls that if you were to take those things out, the game would still be perfectly playable, and those games could be ported to the Switch. But no such luck for Guard, I'm afraid, which makes me even sadder. I see potential in a title like this, and I feel like there are more aspects that could have been explored further, but alas, this dalliance is not meant to last. So while it'll probably never be a game of the year contender for me, I like what I played and I'll look fondly on it. Hey, look at that! I finished the review without mentioning Star Fox Zero! Thanks for seeing my video all the way through. If my timing was correct, then I should be putting this out just in time to say Happy New Year. And not only this, and no it's not a joke, today's also my birthday. So if you like my stuff, and want to see more, the only thing I want then is for you to subscribe. Cause in all seriousness, very few things make me happier than knowing that videos I make are enjoyed by other people. If I can inform, if I can entertain, if I can make people laugh, then it's all worth it. And I'm entirely serious with this next part, but if you're interested in a complete boxed copy of Star Fox Zero, then just hit me up. I had to get a few extra boxed copies for props, and I've got a couple kicking around. So if the first couple people who are interested hit me up, I will gladly send one to them. You want them? They're yours. Like I said, just hit me up. And until next time, thanks for watching and God bless all of ya.